Welcome on inside the business of social podcast powered by ST and digital. I'm your host, David Brickley. Every single week, we talk to the marketing experts to keep you up to speed on the ever changing digital social marketing landscape. And this one is episode 45. Producer Will, um, I think I'm gonna have to let you go from the podcast here because there's a very important number 45 that is not on this list. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, so you're not going to take the blame at all. Uh, we have Bob Gibson from the MLB. We have the Iron Man, AC Green of the NBA, played about 20 years. Pedro Martinez. We are missing comeback Michael Jordan, number 45. Um, I mean, but I uh, I always go NBA, so I will call this the Pedro Martinez podcast for Red Sox. Um, we will get into the program right about now, episode 45. His name is Chris Soley. He is a marketing manager at Funko, the world's leading creator of pop culture collectibles. Um, it may not, I know for me, when I first heard the word Funko, I didn't understand what it meant. But once you see that product, you know exactly what it is. They pretty much make these, um, their famous product or their collectibles it's really like these fat, almost like fat head bobbleheads, if you will, like with rectangle shaped faces. Um, they hold licenses. I mean, everything like they hold Marvel, they hold the Avengers, they hold all these different sports licenses. I think he said over 12,000 licenses across pop culture. And every time something new comes out that people care about, they create uh, these different uh, products that are just you know flying off the shelf so much so. Uh, they made $700 million in revenue in 2018. So they're doing a okay. Uh, once again, he is the marketing manager, and this is going to be some cool stuff. We've talked to like a lot, right? We've talked to streaming platforms, social platforms, you know, TV network heads, um, a lot of different sports teams. But I really like the fact that we're going to be talking to somebody that is a marketing manager ahead of a product um, because I think that kind of deserves a whole other set of, you know, uh, marketing messaging and, and kind of strategy behind it. So I'm excited to talk to Chris Soley, once again, the marketing manager at Funko, episode 45. All right, he is the marketing manager at Funko, the world's leading creator of pop culture collectibles. Chris Soley joins us on the show. What's going on, Chris? Another day. How you doing? All right. How's it going? How's it going? <laughs> um, I always kick things off with a random question. I saw on your Twitter that you're a future supermarket sweepstakes guy, right? So I want to know what you, you've obviously thought a lot about this. What's your strategy? Because I know a part of the game is get as much money in the cart as you can. So what aisle are you going for, and what's the what's the strategy? Uh, turkey, hams, and coffee. <laughs> it's all about those. Those are the big. Spenders I didn't think right about there. coffee. We we do the meats may be a big uh, big spender, but coffee is up there as well. Yeah, believe it or not, I've had that on my bio for over a year now. And just with the announcement this week uh, that Leslie Jones will be hosting a new reboot of Supermarket oh, wow. Sweep. This is your I opportunity, am, man. Here we go. I'm ready. I've been training. That's hilarious. Um, well, cool, man. I really, you know, it's it's been great to talk to so many people on this podcast from so many different disciplines. But you working at Funko um, is is really a, a different lane that I'm really excited to get into. So, can you just give the listeners and myself just that 60 second elevator pitch of uh, what Funko does and what you uh, oversee day to day? Yeah, uh, Funko is, as we call it, a purveyor of pop culture. Uh, we manufacture the Funko Pop vinyls that many of you have seen in grocery stores and Walmarts and Targets and comic book stores around the country. Uh, but we make many, many uh, different products here, a Duff- bunch of different lines, including we recently got into cereal. We have our Funko's line. Uh, we purchased a, a board game company that is now called uh, Funko Games, and we uh, just revealed Funko Verse, which will be available in October. We've got some digital games. We just uh, revealed Gears Pop. Uh, that's available on Android and iOS, a partnership with Xbox and the Coalition. And uh, we've got another one on the way with NBC Universal called Pop Blitz. And uh, we are just always embedded anywhere there is a fan of something. Mm. That's where we're at. Uh, that we hone in on that. Our, our motto is everyone's a fan of something. And just to give the listeners some context, if you're not familiar with Funko, just a solid seven hundred million dollars in revenue last year. So uh, you know, just just your average small business, not a big deal. Um, <laughs> what, in your opinion, had this company take off? Because, like you mentioned, from the pop culture standpoint, you guys are able to make this uh, this product for anything or everything that there's a fan base to. Why do you think people? Um, find their self gravitating towards the product uh, for all these different 
different lanes. You know, I actually started as a fan of the company first. I started collecting in 2011 and it wasn't until the end of 2016 that I came on board. Uh, but I really think what it boils down to is we're moving into a digital world. Yeah. Uh, people consume their media on their phones, on their TVs, all digitally. You don't buy the DVDs and Blu-rays like you used to, but people still want to show off their fandoms. And I think a Funko Pop is an excellent way to do that, whether it's at home or on your desk. You can buy something that resonates with your childhood or with a movie you just saw or a video game you just played and have it out. It's a great conversation starter. Uh, and then, of course, when it comes to collectibles, people love the hunt. There's nothing like hunting around to find that one product that you really, really have to have. And, and I think all of our fans go through that. Who would be a competitor in the space? Because obviously bobbleheads have been around for decades now, and I, I feel like they're kind of in that lane, but not quite. But is there is there a legitimate competition that is attacking every uh, pop culture moment like you guys are? You've kind of been able to carve your own niche there. I think we're definitely in a league of our own when yeah. it comes to the sheer number of licenses that we have. I'm sure Mattel and Hasbro and some right. of the other companies are focusing on a handful of licenses that they know will produce, mm -hmm. but we just try it all and see what sticks. We had huge success over the last couple of years with things like Golden Girls and Bob Ross. I mean, who else was doing that, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. So marketing manager, obviously a lot goes into that um, on the marketing side. How is your team set up and what are your initiatives that you're really working on here in 2019? You know, when I first started, we were a fairly small team of four to five people that were honing in on our social media channels and going to conventions. And now we have really, really ramped up our marketing team to where we're like 40 or 50 people wow. strong now for you. Uh, covering everything from our social media channels to print marketing and billboards and conventions and other opportunities out there uh, to engage with fans. And we're really, really the main thing that we do is engage with fans. I I'm going to use that word engagement a lot during our conversation yeah. because our fans are what got us here. If it weren't for those people going out and buying the products and hyping us up and, and preaching Funko to everyone else, we wouldn't be where we're at. And we try to reward our fans by engaging with them, doing giveaways, interacting with them, providing opportunities that other people don't get. Uh, so we are always, that's that's our main focus is engagement. Um, two things on that note. Number one, with so many different verticals that you guys are going after, so many different buckets, right? Social, at a home, print, built, all that stuff. Um, how are you measuring success and ROI on that? And what seems to be working the best for you guys right now? I would say we spend the majority of our time with our social initiatives uh, and digital for sure. Uh, we, we just launched our Funko app in the past year, uh, which has been really good. So we're looking at how many people are downloading the app, how often are they engaging with it, what items are they adding, because they can actually track their collection in there. Uh, definitely the numbers of how many people are following us in social, but more importantly, how many people are, once again, engaging with us in social. Uh, that, is a, that is a key, key metric for us. And then from a from a super targeted pay media perspective, does that also sit on your side of the house or is that a different department that kind of goes after that? Uh, we do some in-house and we work with agencies to do some of that as well. Uh, it's kind of a, a mixed bag as we figure out exactly what works best for us. Awesome. Uh, I want to really get into what you said a little bit earlier, which is engagement. And um, I think this is something that really brands don't do enough of. I'm sure you agree. Um, just really social is just that, right? Being social and that two-way conversation. A lot of brands just talk to their consumers and say, do this, do that, CTA this, CTA that. Um, what have you found, um, just some tips and tricks to get, to get granular for a second, what have you found to be most successful in terms of just that, engaging with your audience? Well, I think we, we don't just talk at them. Like you said, we yeah. ask them, what is it that they want? Our fans will be the first to tell you, hey, it's awesome that you have over 1,100 licenses, but you don't make these three things I really, really want. <laughs> So we listen to them, and then we go after those licenses. We're constantly putting that out there. Uh, we we do a lot of giveaways, like I was talking about. So we ask people questions about pop culture in order to enter those giveaways, and that's a great way to kind of get a, a vibe of what's popular and what's happening around that. Um, and then – sharing things they create. Consumer-generated content is big for us. We mm. ask people, uh, we do photo-a-day challenges every so often and say, hey, share your favorite summer moment using a Funko product. And they'll share those photos. And then we share those on our channels and we reward them with prizes. And and just those shares are a big reward because it's right. kind of a, a badge of honor. And that creates a library of evergreen content for you guys internally, which is amazing. Absolutely. We, we don't even have to ask for it. Luckily, our fans are so good they're doing it anyway, uh, but it doesn't hurt to give a prompt with a focus every once in a while. Social is obviously something you have to focus on, but also it's uh, important for your own properties, right? You know, owning emails, your app you mentioned earlier. Um, how much focus is, is put into that and what are some good things you guys have seen on that side of the house, if you will, 
to make sure that you're cultivating your audience and kind of being able to, I guess, I don't know, not control, but you have a little bit more control over those owned lists than you maybe do uh, Facebook's algorithm that may change day to day. Yeah, we definitely struggle with that. I'm yeah. sure a lot of people do. Uh, it's really about being where the fans are. Uh, you know, there are quite a few. Our biggest property, our biggest channel is Instagram mm -hmm. uh, with 1.6 million followers. And while we don't own that, we do we do have that content yep. and we know that they're there. So we're speaking with them there. But you're right. Email is still very, very strong. We have a huge email list that we send out to. And we're constantly uh, hitting our fans with, hey, here's what's going on. Here's, here's how you can interact with us on different channels and promoting things like our app, our podcast podcast, our YouTube channel, uh, and again, asking what it is that they want so that we can be in the space that they're at. That's awesome. Um, I want to backtrack a little bit. Uh, you obviously have had a successful career thus far. How do you approach marketing? What's really your core belief? I have a feeling it maybe has to do with engagement a little bit, but uh, I'll <laughs> ask anyway. What's your, what's your approach when you first started at Funko? Like, hey, we got four to five people, but here's what our North Star has to be. Uh, yeah, you said it. it. It's still the engagement. I mean, I started with that day one coming on board. And luckily, the, the culture with this company was already there, that it's all about the fan, which is what attracted me to the company in the first place. I moved from Texas to Seattle hmm. uh, for this opportunity because I knew it was going to be a good fit. And we've we've continued to drive that home while building on it and finding uh, I'll keep going back to the same things again but where are our fans at they can guide the conversation and if there's a new app a new channel a new opportunity we want to be there as well that's awesome it's not this is totally random and producer will you'll appreciate this but we're, we're going to redo our studio and I'm actually doing your same background there the wood uh, the wood look it looks great those of you that are watching nice. on video <laughs> so don't think I swagger jacked you I already had that idea I promise um <laughs> Upper funnel marketing approach, obviously building a community, um, not just going cold after it. How, what are some ways that you've uh, found that you can really, uh, you know, continue brand awareness about your product? Because obviously you guys have the people that are obsessed with your brand. They'll buy whatever you say. They're really, you know, um, you know, huge fans of your guys. But going out and trying to find new people of why they should care, why they should look into this. What have been some of your narratives that you've been able to use to, to tap into that? I think we're very lucky in the fact that what we've already been doing is taking licenses that people are familiar with and turning them into a product that they can own. So what we've been doing a lot over the last so couple years- So you're doubling down on the love for X uh, a lot exactly. of times, right? So we're, again, where are people at? What are they doing? Video games is a huge growing category, has been for years. So we're doing a lot more video games. We just announced today Apex Legends Pops mm -hmm. that people have been asking for for a long time. Um, we've been doing Fortnite. We were one of the very first companies to make any product for that when it was so hot last year and still continue to drive that home. But looking for the places they're at, music is a huge opportunity for us right now because we didn't have many uh, musicians, but we've yeah. done BTS. NSYNC just came out. We got Rob Zombie and Marilyn Manson. Mm -hmm that nice. we just announced. We've done KISS in the past, so we're all over the board. Uh, but it's a great opportunity not only to continue to deliver to the fans that are already with us, but to find those new fans that are a fan of those properties that may not know about Funko yet. And from a paid media perspective, you can then target anybody that likes KISS on Facebook or anybody that follows the band here. It's, it's so cool to be able to know exactly who your demo is for those individual products. Absolutely. And with our new app that we've launched this year, that's going to give us a lot more opportunities as people add things to their collection and to their wish lists. We'll know even more about what it is that they're after uh, and we'll be able to deliver that. What is, I'm just curious, what is like your top three selling products? Uh, what do people gravitate towards the most? Uh, that's a great question. I would say by licenses, Marvel is huge for yeah. us. Disney is huge for us. And then really there's uh, anime is probably the fastest growing category. We've done really good luck with uh, My Hero Academia over the last year has just been gigantic for us. And that's just one of many. What is the one thing that you think every marketer should be asking themselves? Who's your fan? Who's your follower? Uh, it's really easy to get in that mindset of what my product is and what I need to be selling. Uh, but you've got to have the fans and followers that are engaged and excited about that product if you have any chance of selling it. And then if you're starting a company or a, a, a department from scratch, like you're, you're marketing for the first time, what are some of those things um, that you're looking for? Where do you start, in your opinion, uh, when it comes to, to building a marketing team, funnel, narrative, et cetera? 
Well, I mean, you have to be scrappy if you're starting, yep. for sure. Uh, so go for the most bang for your buck. And I really think social media gives us the opportunity to do things you could not have done 10 to 15 years ago. I mean, I've been doing social media for 10 years, and it's changed drastically in that time. Just a little bit. Um, yep. Right. I mean, <laughs> Facebook was everything 10 years ago, and now yeah. maybe not our most uh, our highest priority. We're going yep. to Instagram first. We're very visual. So Instagram and Twitter provide us a lot of opportunities there. Um. Any fun A-B testing? I always ask this question, um, but any fun A-B testing that you went in with a particular set of beliefs and it surprised you or changed your perception based on a particular campaign or event? I wouldn't call it A-B testing, but again, uh, working with our fans and asking them. Like anytime we have an opportunity at a new license, uh, we may not ask fans, hey, are you interested in X? We'll go out to them and do a Twitter poll and say, we have a chance to do one of these four things and we'll pick a few others in the category that are similar and say, which of these four would you really like to see? Right. And while we may think that that one we were going after is going to be the definitive winner, it'll come in last place. And now it's led us down a path to go look at a new license. And so, are you, that's really interesting because I think you guys have really found a way to literally pull your fans in real time to make mm -hmm. legitimate business decisions. Are you then reporting that to the biz dev team or the the team that's going to go acquire these licenses? How often are you guys meeting and how much of a how serious is, do they take that when you guys provide them with that information? Oh, it's it's huge internally. The data is everything. Over the that's last great. year and a half, we had a new CMO come in, Molly Hartney. Uh, she has an, a fantastic background and track record. And she came in and said, I want the data. Show me the data. Show me the numbers. Show me what's working and what people are asking for. And we sit on the same floor, our marketing team does, with the people that are creating our Amazon store, with the people that are creating our graphics for our website, with the people that are going out and acquiring those licenses. So we can easily put up one of those polls on Twitter and turn over to our licensing team and say, hey, everyone's asking for this. And within a week, they've got a meeting and a contract underway. That's awesome. Yeah, Obviously, people so don't mind um, when, when you're offering money for something, they, they that's a win-win scenario usually. But I'm, has there been any stories internally uh, where you've tried to get that license and people just won't give it up and you kind of, you, you wish you guys had a type deal? <laughs> Absolutely. And most famously, we get the question from fans all the time or more the comment. And have you ever thought about working with Nintendo? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Got we've it. thought about it and we've tried and we're always trying. And one day maybe it'll happen. You know, so that's just and, and how do you handle that feedback? Because I'm sure the average fan doesn't understand like this is a no brainer. Why don't you have this? And obviously there's a lot of red tape that goes into that. Um, I think that's an interesting thing for marketers. Like, how do you uh, approach the fan with that information, knowing that it's kind of out of your control? A big part of the engagement that we do is education. Hmm. We're constantly kind of uh, telling our customers, here's how the process works. But by the time we speak to that one audience, it grows, and you've got a whole bunch of uh, newbies, for lack of a better yeah. term, that come in and don't understand. Yeah. Re-educate. Yeah, we're yeah. constantly talking with them, not at them, about our processes and how it works. And and then it really helps the conversation. And honestly, just a reply like, I know, man, we, w we wish so too, like maybe in the future. Like that's all it takes sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah, in a nice, positive manner. I've yes. seen some other uh, folks out there that are a little more blunt about it, and we try yeah, not I to Yeah, I mean, be. it's funny you say that because I've actually you know, sat clients down before. I, I just don't believe in the this, this snarkiness with your fan base. I think you have to be super uh, positive, and even if they ask a silly question, like it's just really not when, – when people choose to follow you, it sounds like you agree with my sentiment too. Like It needs to be overly positive and like, hey, no problem, Like, good question. It can't be, uh, let's use this time to be sarcastic. Well, it's a reflection of your company and your company culture. 100%. If you make one slip up these days yep. and say something snarky or just you know slip up and say something horribly wrong, it could, it could crumble your yep. company. Yeah, 100%. Um, well, cool, man. I want to jump into some rapid fire here. So first yep. question, what is the one social or marketing tool that you could not live without? Instagram. Uh, from a business perspective, what social platforms seem to be working the best right now? Instagram. <laughs> it's like an Instagram uh, PSA. I love it. Um, right. Well, how about this? Can you rank it in order of importance? Instagram being number one, but you have Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat. Um, for your specific audience, what seems to be kind of, what's the breakdown for you guys in terms of time spent? As far as number of people following us, Twitter falls second in line there. But I think as far as the kind of quality time that we get with fans, YouTube is is right up there as well. We have, I think, 450,000 subscribers working our way towards half a million. Nice. But the amount of minutes and hours that they spend with us each month, uh, not only watching our, our content that we create, but our lives 
is through the roof. Uh, and it's such a great opportunity to to give immediate feedback to fans. And what's been most successful there? Are you guys doing unboxing? Are you guys doing reveals? Uh, like what what's been the most successful on the YouTube platform specifically? People love to see the products, even yeah. after we put out images on our uh, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, to see a 360 view of a product spinning in front of them. Uh, or we'll do that and we'll put that on YouTube or we'll do them live and we'll take them out and we'll hold them up to the camera and talk about it and answer questions that people have about the product. It really resonates well. Awesome. Um, in our industry, FOMO is obviously a major thing. What do you do personally to keep up with the ever-changing digital landscape? Uh, I am always on whatever the newest tool is. I spend a lot of time on Twitter, and I'm spending more time on Instagram these days. Uh, definitely not only through Funko's brands, but through my own personal accounts, engaging with people that I know are into pop culture uh, and just always trying to learn. I, I feel like every single day I've got to learn something new. I feel like that's a, a good point. Like You just almost just have to have that thirst for knowledge. It really isn't a, a new site or a follow or a book that you must read. It's like, as long as you have a thirst for knowledge, it feels like you'll always work it out. Oh, and with our fandoms, with our fans, there's so, it's such a wide breadth of different things uh, that people are into. I just, I, whatever's new, I'm into video games, movies, television. Uh, if people are telling me to watch it, I do it. Uh, you mentioned that you're always kind of looking at new platforms. Um, what's your current philosophy on TikTok, And has that been something that Funko has kind of looked at or opened up yet? We've looked at it. Uh, we're still trying to make sure we tackle it the appropriate way. Got I mean, it. one thing I firmly believe, and Funko does as well, is if you are going to venture into a new channel, don't don't just half it. Yeah. You know, do it right. Two feet Have first, somebody yeah. dedicated to it yeah. that is really going to give it the best possible try. Um, and then, for your standpoint, any advice? Uh, anybody that wants to manage that team of forty or fifty and kind of work for a major brand like Funko? Uh, that's successful. Um, any advice you've kind of learned throughout your career that may be helpful to the listeners? You just got to get in there and do it. I mean, it, I, I got into this from working in the printing industry before because I wanted to promote and market and everyone was going to social. And so I just dove in and tried to learn everything I could. And I basically, that was an education. That was another degree. Yep. People ask us the all the time class. how to get on yep. our art team here. Well, art Get out and draw and yeah, paint yeah. and get digital. They want to get on our team to work on video. Make videos. The The amount of opportunities that you have at your fingertips now for almost no cost is outstanding. I mean, you can do anything you want and, and then turn that into the, a career. The barrier of entry is zero, and I always say if you want to get better at pull-ups, you got to start doing pull-ups. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could recommend anyone in your network you think would provide value to the listeners, just be able to drop some knowledge, anybody that comes to mind for you that could be a good next guest for the show? Molly Hartney, our CMO, would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, she's done a few interviews, but she's got just so much knowledge. Uh, and it's amazing that even though pop culture was not necessarily a main focus for her, how she's adapted over the last mm -hmm. year and a half to really get it. Uh, she's outstanding. That's absolutely awesome. love her. Yeah. Love it. I'll have to hit you up for that intro. Um, well, cool, man. Chris Soli with Funko. Thank you so much for your time, man. That was uh, that was really amazing. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. The big takeaway for me on that episode, uh, producer Will, was really the engagement part of it. Um, they do a really, really good job of simply pulling their audience, and literally that data from a Twitter poll gets passed on to the CMO, which then gets passed on to the person head of licenses, and they literally go out and get licenses based on talking to their consumers. So they've done a really, really good job of making that the North Star for their marketing approach. We're gonna do giveaways, we're gonna you know, introduce you know, consumer-generated content and put that on our feeds, we're gonna ask questions and polls, and we're gonna make sure that we're delivering the product that our fans want, which is like, it seems, why is that such a foreign concept? Like give the fans what they want, play the hits, right? Um, but a lot of products, a lot of brands don't uh, understand the value of social and the ability to touch your audience and just ask them, what do you guys want? What's up? What are we missing? What's something that you would buy? And, uh, and really that data being used. And I think maybe social departments, marketing departments will get that data or implore, I'm sorry, employ that strategy. But then on the other side of the house, on the business development side or what have you, they don't then take that data and do anything with it. It really seems Funko has done that the right way and there's great communication and that's why they're so successful. So really interesting episode. Uh, thank you so much, Chris, for coming on the program. Uh, we ask... Uh, you guys to go to iTunes and subscribe five stars as producer Will would say rate and review Spotify YouTube if you're more visual 
Again, Chris had a great little studio there, probably one of the most professional setups. He, I think he's going to send us the other side of his uh, microphone audio. So that's going to be probably the, I'm not going to put you any pressure, Will, but probably the cleanest podcast you guys have listened in all 45 episodes with the high quality microphone. I appreciate that, Chris. Um, but yeah, you will guys also see an update to our new studio in the next few weeks. It's going to look similar to Chris's studio again not Swagger Jack in his style. All right, so thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Episode 45, this has been another edition of the Business of Social Podcast. My name is David Brickley. It's been powered by SCN Digital. Thanks to Dylan and Will, as always.